welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning back in to our Twitch stream. Um, it's Megan again with Welcome in the Welcome Experience Center uh, here with Shay at Gravity Sketch. And we are getting ready for the super cool Gravity Sketch workflow demo. So I won't talk at you guys too much more because I'm going to leave this up to the professionals. So I'm going to hand it over to Shay and his team. Great. Thanks, Megan. So hey everyone, uh, my name is Shay Sosanya. I'm co-founder and CEO of Gravity Sketch. And what I'd like to do is just walk you guys through a little bit about the company, just a general overview, and then we're going to jump into the workflow demo. So this shouldn't take too long, maybe 15 minutes. We can just blast through a, a quick presentation we prepared for you. And then I have a few members of my team on, on board who are um, looking forward to, to showing off and, uh, and sharing the workflow. So I hope everyone can see the screen now, which I believe you can. And I'll just go into the next slide. So Gravity Sketch is a 3D design platform. We're really encouraging people to start sketching and thinking in 3D from day one. So express your ideas that are already 3D in your head in 3D in the, uh, in the digital environment. And what we want to do is retain that element of sketching throughout that process. What we've been doing for the past three years now, we've been three years as a venture back company, and we've been trying to build a really strong brand working with uh, tier one enterprise customers, mainly in the automotive space. And increasingly now we're reaching the, the footwear industry, create some really key partnerships and really supporting the, the academic side of things. So we understand that students are where things, where ideas germinate and, and new technologies get adopted at a much faster rate. So we're supporting universities with our education program. And on top of that, design is not an isolated, uh, I guess an isolated, um, activity that you do only at work, right? When you, when you go home, you're thinking about design. When you're in the grocery store, you're thinking about design. So you're always thinking about how you can be a better designer or level up your skills. And so we offer Gravity Sketch for um, normal use on uh, your personal device. So if you have an Oculus Quest or an Oculus Rift headset or any other VR headset, you can access it. And we've grown that community pretty substantially to, to roughly 50,000 professionals across various different industry verticals. So all this to really build a, a nice trust, trusted brand that has a community behind it that people can, can, um, can kind of jump in and, and learn as much as they can from. Why Gravity Sketch? So here are the six things that we always try to promote and kind of the foundations of what we're building and what we'll continue to build. Everything that we develop needs to be intuitive and has to happen in real time. So. If you have to hit, click a drop down menu to unfold this feature and unfold that feature and then read a bit of text and enter in some some digits, then it's not really that intuitive and you have to kind of open the manual. What we want users to be able to do is pick up a controller, pull the trigger and start sketching. And that's that's essentially the genesis of Gravity Sketch. And so everything is happening in real time, which means 90 frames per second. Operating on virtual reality headsets like the Oculus Quest here requires us to really create a performant piece of software. and if you had to wait 30 seconds or 40 seconds or even a split second for your stroke to come to life, that would be quite frustrating. It's also a collaborative platform. A lot of people don't know about this, but we've been working with collaboration features for the past two years, and we're just recently starting to deploy these to uh, small to medium sized studios. And it fits into your workflow. So when you create something in Gravity Sketch, you can export it as a variety of different file formats, any, anything from an OBJ file to an IGES file. So it should flow into roughly 95% of the CAD softwares on the market. So you should be able to take out your rough sketch and send it over to a 3D modeling program and the technical person can pick up. Connect it to the cloud. We have a cloud platform called Landing Pad where you can upload your models and download your models and really use that as your hub for um, connecting with your virtual reality environment and it's cross-platform. So at the moment, we're really championing Gravity Sketch on VR, but we also have a walk-in solution as well as an iPad Pro solution. So what we really want to do is focus in on the sketching phase. Nothing in this world really comes to life without a sketch. So from your shoes to the chair I'm sitting in, the computer we're speaking through, any idea that people think of generally starts with a sketch. And that's because it's the most immediate way to represent your idea. And we want to honor the craft of sketching and bring that into the, the digital 3D space. We also want to merge this world of prototyping and actually getting physical with materials because we know that this is a very important part of the design process where you're exploring ideas and exploring shapes and form through rough mock-ups and prototypes. They're very informative. They give you a lot of information and they help you accelerate in your design process. So can we bring this thinking 
and creating in 3D from day one into a solution that allows people to have that um, immediacy and directness and ambiguity of a sketch. And so far, we've been able to do that with uh, a few of our power users really demonstrating this. And if we look at the timestamps here, in just a few minutes, you can generate a pretty comprehensive sketch that gives you enough information to move forward into the next phase of your, of your process. And whether that's a Photoshop underlay to sketch on top of, or if you want to move that into 3D package, you can do that. But the idea is to be as flexible across the, the workflow as possible. And so talking about the workflow in the software pipeline, we have these four buckets, and we've, of course, made this very um, truncated. It could be much longer and much more complex based on um, how your team works. But here are the three ones that we kind of, or the four ones that we, we kind of find across most of the design studios that we visit. This ideation bucket, and then you have review and iteration. You go into rendering, and then you, you finally go into that 3D visualization or sending off to manufacturing, so 3D realization phase. And in the ideation phase, you're using primarily 2D tools and it's a 2D team. And then when you get into review and iteration, that's where we get our physical mock-ups or we, we pin things to the board and we try to get everyone around the, the table to look at look at things. And then we we may go into a key shot render if we have a rough, loose 3D model and we'll finally go into into the, the 3D render. Or we could do things in, in 2D, rend 2D rendering as well, as well with Photoshop. And where we think our, our strength is, is right there in that review and iteration phase. So you can bring multiple people into grab your sketch or even just have that loose 3D model and someone says, hey, I wanna see it from a different angle. You can take a screenshot and send it over as an image. And if we look at our customers, primarily they've focused on this type of workflow where they're thinking in 3D of course, and then representing those ideas directly in Gravity Sketch and then transferring those ideas back and forth with uh, a CAD team or a 3D modeling team through obviously CAD tools, which are primarily 2D screen based. And the idea is that circular workflow helps with the communication stream. And so although it's circular and you may be moving back to the 3D environment in Gravity Sketch, you're still moving forward. So you're kind of progressively um, understanding and unpacking the idea. And so by the time you get to the final visualization, it's a little bit more refined and there's less of the tendency to go back and um, recreate steps that are a little bit unnecessary because communication may have been unclear earlier in the process. And there's a, probably like four workflows that we've seen come across the, in the industry so far. And we'll, we'll highlight a little bit on automotive because those have been the most vocal with our tool and we've seen the most uh, return on investment. We're just getting our feet wet in the, in the footwear industry over the past year. And so We'll hope, hopefully this time next year and sneaker week, we'll have a, a bit of stats to share here as well. But freeform sketching is, is just the kind of immediate thing that you do when you get into gravity sketch. But then you can sketch over a last, or in this case, a, a chassis or anything from the engineering team. You could bring that in, import it and sketch over it. And what this gives you is a lot of conviction. You really know that your, your, your sketch or your design is working with the real constraints of, of the engineering. And Another way is looking at it as I want to transition my 2D skills into 3D. So here in the, this third example, you can bring in an image and trace that image and then start pulling it apart into 3D. So you, you kind of build this bridge for yourself from the 2D world to 3D. And then finally, you can import any model and you can start just annotating and marking up. So having a really rich 3D discussion where you bring in multiple stakeholders that might have something to say about how this might come to life. Maybe it's a marketing team or someone from the engineering team. They can quickly add some notes annotations and you can walk away from that meeting fully understanding the design and the direction from your own perspective. In terms of geometry, we support three basic geometry forms. One is NURBS, which is non-uniform rational B-splines. And this is what most of the CAD tools use for surfacing. So pretty much all the vehicles on the road right now have gone through some sort of geometry format like this. And then you have mesh. And quad meshes are meshes that you might see in like Pixar, for example. And those are really easy to be subdivided. So that ends up with another very smooth result. And it's quite freeform and liberating for you to create with that geometry type. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the demo a bit as well. What we really want to do here is have a smooth transition from your current workflow into 3D and then back into the existing workflow. And in order to do that, we understand that VR may not be the only window into Gravity Sketch. So being able to pick up your iPad Pro or Wacom tablet and sketch on a screen, but that sketch is 3D, and you can bring that into virtual reality and pull it apart and continue working with it and jump back and forth in a circular manner 
will help you kind of leverage the skills that you've been crafting over the years as a designer in 2D and also inherit some new skills in 3D without um, too much of a drop in productivity. So designing together is a, a completely new, new space, especially in 3D, where you're actually literally designing at the same time on the same exact, um, same exact concept or idea or theme. This is something we're unpacking with the transportation industry and other players in the industrial design industry, but it, it's, a, it's a very interesting because it's a culture change, but it's extremely powerful. So you can make judgments on a line by line basis during your creative process if you're teamed up with a designer that may you may want to join forces with, or you can get direct feedback from the engineering team in real time. If you bring an engineering in, engineer into the, the uh, design review process or the design creation process. So we'll, 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 we'll touch on that a little bit today as well, but this is the latest technology stack that we're building out here. And for everyone on the call, and, and, and even if you're, you're watching this a bit later, feel free to jump over to our site. We're currently offering trials of this uh, collaboration experience. If you're all set up with VR already, you should be good to go. Uh, and touching on the hardware and the setup, if you have uh, pretty much any of the virtual reality hardware on the market right now with six degrees of freedom controller, you can jump into Gravity Sketch and, and you can start working with it immediately. Uh, VR pens are actually becoming a thing. So Logitech and a, a, another London-based startup, Massless, have developed a, a 3D stylus. You can sketch in space and also sketch on surfaces. So that might be a, a way for you to transition. And then, of course, your trusty Wacom tablet and iPad Pro we support. And if you are on a PC, you're going to want to use the NVIDIA graphics card if you're going to use a tethered virtual reality device, so something with a cable like the Rift S or um, the AMD um, card. So you're going to want to go for a higher spec graphics card, but you can also push a lot more performance out of these um, out of these graphics cards as opposed to the, the mobile Quest solution here. Here's a couple of examples from our community. So footwear really was something that, that came to us. A lot of people in the community start picking up our tool who are interested in, in auto and, and transportation design and started to apply it to to footwear and it kind of took off like the tool set was really designed to create uh, really complex geometries and surfaces and as such we've been been able to kind of seamlessly merge into creating outsoles and uh, I guess the complicated surfaces that you might find in the, in, a, in the sole of a shoe or even some of the upper components of a shoe Oh, sorry. And then a few of people from the community have actually dared to go out and, and get their gravity sketches 3D printed and bring it as close to, to physicality as possible. So we have yet to have a, a, a shoe that was made in gravity sketch and has reached the shelves. But um, without mentioning the brand, there is something coming out relatively soon if, if the pandemic allows, which was which is incepted in gravity sketch and pushed all the way through the process to, to final um, pro pro prototype or product. I guess, uh, yeah, final product. Touching on other industries, the automotive industry, again, I've mentioned that quite a bit, but it's been great to see how they're reducing time, but also allowing this seamless communication between teams that are really highly focused on this, the safety aspect and the engineering aspect and teams that are focused a bit more on that aesthetics. And so bringing these two teams together has been really transformative. And then in the entertainment industry, what has been really interesting is that they may have the same timeline, but in a very shorter, short period of time, they're able to churn out a lot of different concepts. So Avatar sequels, they started to use Gravity Sketch quite a bit just to prototype some of the environments for the blue people. And instead of saving time in the prototyping phase, they were actually just creating more environments. So they had more of a variety of creative things to, to go for. So it's really how you wanna apply this technology to your workflow short in time or is it about exploring things that you couldn't explore because you didn't have um i guess the resources to do so or or this immediate direct way of engaging with 3d so we'll move into the demo part of this presentation here we'll we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through some of the the ways that you can apply gravity sketch to the footwear workflow and i'll invite my colleague Emil, who's Part of our customer success team he's also he also does quite a lot of work with universities and, and education in general of gravity sketch so he'll walk us through some of the the process here and we might want to pin his screen now so that everyone can see it clearly and what we're seeing is Amos importing a, a 2d sketch 
And with that 2D sketch, he's then going to bring in a shoe last as well. And with the shoe last and the 2D sketch, you can line these two. And he now has the foundation for the, the creative process or the, the process of transitioning from 2D into 3D. So just lining everything up in Gravity Sketch. So everything is really physical, right? You only have these two controllers. So it's kind of like an Xbox controller split into two. And what you have to do is kind of map. We have to map out all the interactions onto this. We don't have a keyboard and mouse, right? So it's a completely different experience. But what it allows us to do is do some really interesting user experiences where things like constrained movements is nothing but lining up your hands or using joysticks to roll back time and roll forward time, some of these unique ways of working. I uh, just want to mention to the welcome team, we might want to get Amos' screen to be the um, presenter or the pin his screen to the display so he's um, full screen for everyone on Twitch. Working on it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so now Amos using a projection tool here where with, with this tool, what you're essentially doing is projecting to a 2D plane and you can define the plane with his left hand. So you can set the plane anywhere in space and Okay, it looks like we're back up and running. Cool. All right. Yeah. So Amos worked through most of that setup phase where he brought in the, the 2D sketch and traced the 2D sketch. And now he's brought in the shoe last. He's working with the real constraints of the shoe last. And so what he's going to do is just use the stroke tool to sketch out the, the outer sole and keep his sketch, the 2D sketch, as really the guiding sketch. So it's kind of the, the, the defi defining sketch of the of the style of what you're trying to work work through. And so you're, you're using your 2D, but you're also moving in the 3D space at the same time. So it's kind of like this really nice hybrid. And you can go into edit mode and start editing control points. And with editing the control points, it's, it's a little bit similar to editing vertices in Illustrator. So it should be feel really familiar. And here, what you see is there's not a whole lot of clicking and, and messing about. It's really just grab the point, move it to where you want it. And this type of workflow and this type of experience is something that's pretty intuitive to us, right? Because I want to get a glass of water. I can just reach out, grab it, and take a, take a sip, and then place it back where I want it. So that type of interaction we get time and time again from the customers feels very natural and intuitive. And so he's using constrained movement here as well, where you just line up your hands and, and you can move something down in a, in a controlled fashion. And with that, we're able to really quickly develop the three layers of the outsole. And we can manipulate the points thereafter. And we'll see how this is going to be beneficial to us later when we start applying some, some surfaces to these things. But from a pure sketch pr perspective, what AMOL has here is totally usable just to go into Photoshop right now and know that you have conviction if you want to take a, a screen capture in the essentially in the perspective. So you really have nailed the perspective. You don't have to fight with, oh, is that working in 3D or is that not working in 3D? So you can just come and take a quick screen grab of a couple of different angles, chuck it into Photoshop, and you can start working your Photoshop pipeline as well. Or you can continue in 3D. So if we wanted to continue into 3D, we now can, can keep on pushing this design further, start working with surfaces, or finish off some, some of the stroke work. And here on the surface tool here, it's it's a pretty powerful tool. We're going to focus on a feature called bridge. And what this, what this allows us to do is put a surface between two different um, curves, right? So if you, you've, we've laid out all those curves for our outsole, and now we can draw a surface or apply the surface across the whole thing. And those surfaces here are going to be completely editable. So we can go back and, and also do a bit of, of touch up to that surface if we wanted to add or manipulate it in, in various ways. So we've added a whole other row of points in there now. And then we can start pushing and pulling that out to, to give it some volume or give it some contours and curves. Happy to answer questions along with this demo as well if you guys want to drop questions into the, into the chat. And so from here, what we can actually do is take that surface and change its um, properties by moving it over into a different layer. And now we can drop out the sketch and now we're just working with the outsole itself and you can take this quite far so you can continue editing or you can convert this into subdivision 
So if we convert this into subdivision, now we can edit this in a completely new way. And what this allows us to do is essentially move and manipulate individual aspects of the surface as opposed to manipulating full spans of, of control points. So it's slightly different to, to vector work in the sense that if you're in NURBS, you have to work with the, the whole row at a time. But in sub D, you can just work with isolated pockets of geometry. And so this is what we're going to do here. So Amos merged those two surfaces together. And now he's blending them with the subdivision tool set here. And then from here, he'll be able to create some pretty unique geometry and make an outsole that is a little bit unconventional, untraditional. And again, this is all in the spirit of just exploring ideas. So we're doing all of this still in, in under 15 minutes, just really quickly ideating. And, and again, this doesn't have to be a sole um, 3D workflow. You could just bring this straight back into Photoshop. So even for the sake of just getting better perspective or better understanding of the idea in 3D, even if it doesn't go to manufacturing, this is a great way of, of, of achieving that. And so we've already kind of worked out this the sole and um, and uh, and toe tab, and now we can patch up the whole thing and completely close it off. And this is how you can achieve 3D printable um, data. So with subdiv subdivision, you can close off a whole surface and create a, a solid a solid model essentially. Now we, we work with quads, which are four sided um, four sided surfaces but you can break into three-sided surfaces here or three-sided sections in this. But when you work with quads, you get really good flow. And with the, with the flow, you essentially know that you're gonna have a, a dependable result when you're doing the division. So you're smoothing it off uh, further. And everything seems to be round and bubbly, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our crease tool and we're gonna be able to apply creases, which give us a, sharp, a nice sharp edge. So if we wanna have a nice sharp edge across the bottom of the outsole, we just grab the tool, it highlights the edge, and then you can pull the trigger and you're able to apply the sharp edge to it. You can also grab a section and just pull it and extrude it out. So this can give you really crazy a number of, of ideas and iterations you can move from. So in the spirit of iteration, we might want to grab that outsole, make a duplication of it, and then continue working with that in different forms and, and, and explore different concepts or different ideas, right? So turning into a heel, for example, or putting straps across it or what, whatever that, that may be. And just to walk you through the process here, we can go through step by step. What we can see here is that the importing of the image, tracing of the image, and then pulling that image apart. So if we can get it just right on top of that AMO and see kind of how this looks in a bit more 3D. Yeah, so you can see here, we pulled that image apart and it's still uh, symmetrical at this stage, but no shoe symmetrical. So in the next instance, we broke the symmetry and we created the kind of asymmetrical normal um, shoe that you might look at. And then here we're adding a bit of details. And then we start to bring in surfaces. So there's a few more layers here that we will expose where you could bring in the surfaces and the subdivisions. And so this will show you kind of the progression of a shoe. So here's the NURB surface as it stands. It's a little bit more rigid. And then here we're, we're starting to move into the, the full nerve surface where you add the, the um, adjustments to or the features that you'd add, like the, um, the heel and, and the, the strap across the top of the shoe. And then we move into subdivision, which allows us to explore some much more interesting and organic forms. So here's just the kind of con direct subdivision conversion. And then as we move towards the other um, aspects here, and there's another layer we want to expose here, we can see that we've, we're now starting to explore really unique sole patterns. So the, that's our middle one, the middle one there that we, that's what we started with and that's kind of taking it through the whole process. And then this one over here to the left is one that we've started to explore the backside, the heel of the, of the outsole and really exploring some unique kind of crazy forms. And you can make multiple instances of that and explore that in as many times as we wish. So yeah, that kind of is gravity sketch in a nutshell. What we'd love to do at this stage here is just answer a few questions that may have come through as Amos continues to kind of show off a couple other features. 
And uh, I, I think, Megan, you might be moderating the uh, yeah. tips. If there's any questions, we're happy to answer them now. I surely am. So first, I want to call out uh, Roshan. Someone just said, thank the entire Gravity Sketch team for all of the updates in the last two months. Tons of features which have streamlined the workflow more than ever. So thank you. Um, for example, the snapping sub D to curves is just a breeze. So good job on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Roshan's a, Rosh yeah, Roshan's a really cool um, industrial designer at Phillips. He actually has background in footwear as well. So oh, he's cool. A, yeah, he's got a lot, lot of credibility in the chat for sure. Amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, any plans to design around the real world using HoloLens? Yeah, I mean, we've looked at it quite a bit. I think. Well, I know one of the challenges that we have is accessibility, right? We would love to yeah. develop something for HoloLens, but it's a, it's a three grand piece of software. And that really excludes quite a few people in the community. And what we've seen is people like Roshan who pick it up in their spare time. These are the people that are actually pushing our software forward and actually giving us the insights that we need to, to develop a, a, a piece of software that can work for various types of workflows like the footwear industry. So. We'd love to get there and hopefully mm -hmm. working with um, Microsoft on a on a cheaper or hopefully they're working on a cheaper device so we can work tighter with them. But this device here is the um, Oculus Quest. It's about four hundred dollars and we're hoping that in the future they allow these cameras in the front to just allow you a pass through view, a, a pass pass through view. So you can just see the real world through the cameras and that mm -hmm. will probably be the closest cheapest way that we can get into augmented reality and start exploring interactions in that space. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like accessibility is often really the biggest barrier. I think the learning capacity for people, especially young designers now is so much, it just it's easier in that respect. But like you said, accessibility is a thing. So hopefully, you know, in light of COVID and the need for people to have more technology just for learning and for working and all that stuff, hopefully we start to see some of those things change. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, the, the Oculus Quest is half the price of a smartphone, right? So totally. Yeah. Every, everyone in the trip stream that has an iPad Pro, it's like, a, a, well, depending on what model you have, it's like a third of your iPad Pro, right? So mm -hmm. I would definitely encourage people to go out and, and buy it. And the resale value is also really strong on it right now. So it's, it's a perfect time to get involved where you can, if you don't like it, you could always sell it and, and, and recoup quite a bit of your money back. <laughs> right? so, For sure. All right, trying to see if anyone else has any more questions out there. Just a lot of love, just a lot of okay. love for Gravity Sketch. Cool. Always good, always good. Awesome. Well, yeah, so you can see Amos doing some kind of fine tuning features here. And some of these things may be done in, um, I guess, a more robust engineering package, but, or you can import these things as assets. But what's great is that you can just give the hint or give the sign that this is a maybe this is an eyelet here or this is a tab that we might want to in, in, include in this design. So doing this type of stuff is really helpful from the, for the designer. It really frees you up from waiting, and and you could just spend more time ideating, concepting, figuring things out on your own. Like you don't need to wait for anyone to give you agency to do so. So I really like where I when I see designers that are pushing the limits of um, you know what the tool can do or giving hints at what uh, maybe a more more traditionally classically engineering type of thing, like type of feature maybe, but just through a sketch. It, I think there's a certain poetry there where in a certain looseness that I haven't seen in the, in the 3D space before. And we're hoping to retain that with our software throughout. So it doesn't really have the hallmarks of the tool, but rather the hallmarks of the creator. But we're yeah. really lucky to have a, a seasoned footwear um, 3D 3D uh, master, I should say, or um, I guess a 3D technical person uh, joined the call here, Ollie Saunders, who won a challenge that we put out um, just under a month ago with Laceless, which is a um, an online community design platform where they run challenges of uh, people can design different different types of, of footwear concepts based on a central theme. And we ran the theme of the future of the slide, which is um, as you guys may know, I have one here actually. It's just a uh, you know the classic kind of slide. I think I think Adidas really did a great job where they launched theirs with just the the, the three stripes across the top. And so, it was, how do we redesign this or reimagine this? Mm. And um, I think Ollie did a really fantastic job. And at the end of the co competition, what we did was 
we brought we asked all of the all the people that participated to the mm -hmm. five finalists to represent their ideas in 3D and present their ideas through Gravity Sketch. And um, Ollie was selected as the winner of 500, which five were the finalists. And uh, and he essentially created like this kind of re retail slash design studio environment. And we wanted to, to walk walk everyone in the call through his process as well as um, as well as talk with him a little bit and, and, and show his work and show his, his, his final design and, and hear directly from someone who had no Gravity Sketch experience to essentially working with the tool and um, and developing something that won a, won a, won a competition against five other, 500 other designers. Yeah, so I'd like hey. to invite oh. Ollie to the call and um, yeah, I go think for it. his room here. No. Let me do a little do a little juggling here. Sorry, guys, on the end. We do actually have a question. Um, well, we have some questions on this collaboration feature, which I believe we will get to um, soon. <laughs> and then also, um, let's see, where did that go? How much post-processing is needed in order to get the mesh, to get meshes created in Gravity Sketch ready for 3D printing? Well, you can do it straight from the application if you close off everything. So in subdivision mode, if you um, close off all the all of the um, the kind of holes and open gaps, you can essentially send that straight over into into 3D print. So if if like Emil here is going to start with a primitive, that's printable because that's closed, that's completely closed, and anything that he extracts or extrudes off of it is printable. But now he's created a hole that's no longer printable. Um, because there's no thickness there, but as soon as you close it off, it's ready to print. So in the in the slideshow that we shared earlier, um, Alyssa, she's the uh, designer who was creating the, the 3D prints. She was doing these easy concepts and she was closing off everything and sending it straight to print. You can also just take your model out and send it to something like Mesh Mixer, which is a free tool, and that allows you to quickly um, fuse all the, the mesh together and then eventually send it off to print. Um, so yeah, there's there's ways of, of getting printable models directly from Gravity Sketch, but also looking at the rest of your tool chains, you can put stuff in into um, into uh, into the right the right next step and, and get it ready for printing. I would say liaison if you're not doing it on your at home, liaison with the, the person in your 3D print shop at your at your um, company and, and see exactly what they need and maybe work collaboratively together there. Any other questions before we jump into? Uh, to yeah, a for sure. There's one. Where did it go? Let me track it down. <laughs> We're waiting for adding thickness to surfaces as a comment. Yes. Maybe not a question, but just. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming, just guys. A... <laughs> I have I, our guy is right here who's uh, who's uh, working on it Dil diligently. Diligently, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Could it's very, you? It's a very hard piece of math to solve. So for sure, for sure, I feel like when you whenever you get into this geometry talk, it just gets real mathematical. That's a yeah. terrible joke. But there we go. Let's see. Oh, could you talk a bit about importing CAD, so OBJ files, into Gravity Sketch and what benefit that provides? Sure, absolutely. So I guess the benefit is if you guys have a defined shoe last or any kind of engineering piece of content or data that you have to respect, you cannot break. Essentially, someone says, don't design past this point. That gives you this perfect balance of having the, the actual physical um, or virtual, I guess, representation of what the physical constraint would be. And then you're loose and free enough to sketch around that. So you could, you could really push your limits there as opposed to in uh, 2D, essentially taking a screenshot of the side and then kind of sketching and imagining how the 3D stroke may uh, may cross or, or move across that line or move across that um, that object that you've imported. So I think it's really about giving you confidence and knowing that okay, this design works in relationship to this this OBJ engineering data that I brought in, which the engineering team said I must respect. And so with that type of I think with that type of conviction, you when you then go to the engineering team, it's a little bit less, oh, hey, you need to go rework this, this, and this, because it's just not going to work. It's more like, hey, let me invite you into collaboration. Let you view it in real time, and, and then we can actually tweak the lines together. And I think, yeah, by just having that ability to, to bring in, like, let's say we're designing a lamp. 
I can bring in a light bulb and I know exactly the dimensions of that light bulb and I can be as free and gestural around it as possible. And the same with the shoe last. I mean, as we're seeing here in Amos example, he's just sketching around it freely, but also respecting that he can't go past that. So the benefit from our perspective is really just giving you more conviction in your design and giving you some sort of benchmark of the real world constraints and, and, um, and dimensions. Sorry, had to jump over and unmute myself. Why don't you go ahead and now that we have Ollie here with us, why don't you guys take okay. it away? <laughs> so Emil, why don't we jump over to Ollie's uh, collaboration room and what we'll see is Emil and um, Warren, who's, who's joined us as, a, as an intern, are going to be working together in the collaboration room or at least walking through the space as, as me and Ollie talk about it. So I'd like to introduce Ollie Saunders. Ollie, I'd love for you to do your own introduction in terms of your background because I, I'm probably going to um, stumble over some things that I probably should <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, well, thank you. For, thanks for having me as well. Um, so yeah, I'm Ali Saunders. Um, I've been a 3D designer for about nine years. Um, I've worked at Clark's for nine years. Um, started off as a junior there and uh, uh, ended up managing the 3D team uh, until recently. So I've got lots of experience with more engineering and traditional 3D programs. So majority of my time I used uh, SolidWorks. Um, and yeah, decided to enter this competition for Laceless and got through to the final. And uh, just with a 2D sketch, actually got got through to the final. And uh, using gravity and VR and sub D modeling was completely new to me. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a, a fun journey. Um, and uh, yeah, just absolute um, amazing piece of software that you guys have produced. And I just. I just really enjoyed using the program and learning it, um, which makes a change from most 3D programs. I think that's that's what struck me the most is how easy it is to pick up and how enjoyable it is to use. Um, so yeah, I can I can go on and on about gravity, but um, <laughs> yeah. So we have your um, we have your design, your winning design here, and yeah. What I like about this is that you really laid out kind of your journey, but also how it may be represented in the context. If I was to walk up and see this design in a in a store or um, even in a design studio, so it'd be it'd be great if you can touch on a little bit. Yeah, sure. So, um, this process. yeah, I think I, I I had a couple of hours before the presentation started, and I I was just thinking of all these crazy ideas in my head because really with gravity and VR. The, there's no boundaries with what you can create uh, for a presentation. Um, you can just you can just go crazy with it, you know. And uh, I decided to just try and keep it fairly simple and just keep it like a stage environment, like you would in a trade show or um, you know retail environment. Uh, and just showing the journey I went through from inspiration images to two D sketching, and then going into gravity and um some some renders that i've got on the, on the back wall there so i just from gravity i was able to bring it into keyshot and quite quickly uh create some realistic um, results um so yeah i think yeah it just it, just keeping it simple worked well for this mm. but if i was to do it again and spend more time on the presentation there, there's so much you can do in terms of presenting and uh you can get so creative with it and you can create presentations that you otherwise would not be able to create or you wouldn't have time to create. Mm -hmm. And can I ask you a little bit about like your concept and, and what drove you to to design that concept? And I guess you you did the first half of the competition without 3D. You did it all 2D. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, just started off with some 2D ideas um, on, on Procreate on the iPad. Um, uh, I would have usually gone into 3D because that's, that's what I do, uh, but I decided to to just go with 2D for, for this one. Um, so yeah, the, the idea behind the slides, uh, there's some images that are on the far left there. Um, I was just exploring like material wrapping around the foot. I uh, worked with um, an amazing uh, designer called Mariah Brugink over the years, and she's amazing on innovation ideas. And it stemmed from one of her um, original uh, prototypes that you can see there on the top left. So I just sort of explored that. I just wanted to keep it simple. Um, that's what slides are all about. Uh, just a, a super simple, beautiful product. And 
and use the idea of material wrapping and flowing um, to just make it really flexible and comfortable basically. So brought it into Gravity Sketch, the, the 2D sketches, and started on the footbed. Well, actually, when I first started with Gravity Sketch, I was just messing around because it was just so fun, just drawing loads of squiggles and crazy shapes and stuff. But once I got to grips with like the tools, I was able to um, to really go deep with the sub, sub D modeling. I, I think that's for me, that's the most useful uh, part of the, the program. And it's literally just one polygon at a time, um, starting with the last, the, the, the prefabs and gra gravity sketch save you loads of time. So you can just delete faces off a last and drag drag points around and then just start. Um, once you get your basic form right, which doesn't take long, uh, you know, an hour or two, then you really start going into the finer details and uh, just the level of detail that you can zoom into is just crazy. Um, because you feel like video doesn't do it justice. When you're in VR, you really are. It, it's, it's just incredible how close up you're getting to that model and how real it all feels. Um, so yeah, I spent a long time perfecting the, the footbed um, and, and the outsole was one, just two, two surfaces basically. Um, and when I brought it into the rendering package key shot, I realized I should have done that a lot sooner because I think I was getting too fussy in VR um, because the resolution in VR is not 100%, it's, it's pretty good, it's good enough. But uh, once you bring it into uh, a, re a rendering package like, so uh, like Keyshot, you'll very quickly get a better feel for how the model is looking. So I think that would have saved me time if I was to do it again. I would bring that model in a lot sooner and just get a good feel for it, the proportions, um, how it's looking in reality and then go back into VR and perfect it. I think that would have saved me time. But if I was, and if I was to make this again, it would just be a, a day or two, I think, to create. So it's so fast. If I was going to make that in a more traditional engineering package like SolidWorks or Rhino, I, for me personally, it would take a bit more time. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of our favorite designs from the competition, mainly because of how far you push it and how I guess how realistic it was in the, in the same sense like we could we can almost see that on a shelf and maybe that's because of how you presented it um I'm, I'm not quite i'm not quite sure like what kind of like really pushed it across the line maybe it is the material choices you use the shape the forms but it kind of all came together quite nicely and what i'd like to know a little bit about is how you know you you essentially started from zero gravity sketch knowledge to creating a the the kind of a, a competition winning slide how do you expect to to use this in the future and, and are you going to use this in the future and how, how does it kind of play into your design process but i also would love to learn a little bit about how you might present your work and will you be using the collaboration feature as part of that presentation stream yeah for sure so um i definitely intend to keep using this because um i've never used anything that's so um so quick to get results in 3D, and um, it's a, first and foremost, it's good fun to use. Like, you know, it's it's quite addictive. Like, you don't want to put it down. Um, so, like, I've recently gone freelance as a 3D footwear designer, and I'm teaming up with um, a few other people in, in the industry who are also freelancers, uh, who are 3D and design, and potentially some product developers as well. So, going forward, we'll be working on our own concepts and probably working with clients who have um, loose concepts as well. So for, for that, gravity is perfect to generate quick ideas that then we can render out and, and show like um, a selection of, of what we're thinking quite quickly in 3D. So for that, I think it's perfect. I would also, I also like doing my own designs. Obviously I, I worked on this. Um, uh, my, my day job is to work with designers and for them to um, to give me their sketch and work that in 3D. Um, going forward, I, I th I'm seeing more and more designers using Gravity, um, footwear designers, which is great because from my experience, there's, there's some projects which are really difficult to go from 2D to 3D and you really need the designer because to, to use the 3D software. 
and um, without you know months for, of training, that's not always possible. But with gravity, it's it's a couple of days to learn it. I, I really think that anyone can can get pretty good at it very fast. Um, so so I think it's 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 ideal for the starting points of your ideas um, generated in three D. What you want for for certain models, especially the more organic um, designs. And then for presenting, I mean, if you're working remotely, I mean, pretty much everyone is at the moment. To so get your ideas across to other people in your business or to clients, it's like if people, if, if, if you can easily get hold of a headset, um, it's just incredible because I think what's, what um, I really find amazing about gravity is you're so focused on your, first of all, what you're doing also when you're presenting whether you're presenting or the person is um in the presentation they are totally focused as well because when you're in vr you've got no distractions whatsoever uh, i absolutely love that about it you you just you're so um you're so focused on what's going on yeah and, and on that kind of um transition from the 2d to 3d and a little bit, of, you talked a little bit about how working with the designer, you need the designer to be there with you to kind of get get through that process. Yeah. Like, I guess, how far would you push something in Gravity Sketch before handing off? Like, what is the inflection point before handing it off into Rhino or into another software where it can be completed or, or polished or finished off? Yeah, I, I think it always depends on on the brief and, and the scenario. I mean, I would happily, and I'm planning to happily go and create a full shoe fully detailed in, in grab totally in gravity and then just see what the difference is with that compared to working in, in, in things like Rhino and, um, and Modo. Uh, cause I, would just like to see what, uh, first of all, the time difference would be and also what the, the level of quality will be. Um, but yeah, going back to that, I would expect in an ideal world, uh, which would help the 3D guys and allow more creativity for designers, footwear designers, to create those initial um, 3D curves and 3D surfaces. So like the overall form and proportions, because that can take a long time to, to translate from 2D to 3D when there's two people involved who aren't always on the same, um, on the same page as to what what the designer wants it's not always easy for them to to um translate that so in an ideal world i would see the design the footwear designer doing a quick uh one hour model um on the form and the, and the curves and certain details and then hand that over to someone who's more experienced with 3d and can do the engineering side of things and get all the measurements accurate um the tooling for instance get that perfect and and then go into the rendering side which is also um a, a real skill that takes a long time to 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 learn so yeah i, I wouldn't expect the footwear designer to do much more than that but it would help out the 3d guys and sh should create a, a smoother faster process i think and it'd be more fun that's cool um Kind of the, the last little question before, I, uh, hopefully we have some people in the Twitch that are going to ask questions, but before we hand it over to them, yeah. what would you, I guess, how would you describe this or recommend, how do you, how, yeah, how would you recommend moving someone to move into the 3D space who has no 3D knowledge? So like, let's say the designers at Clark's that you used to work with, mm -hmm. what, what would be your, your, your line or how would you describe this to them? Because I, I guess, yeah. You, you're promoting it now and, and I'm just wondering if you were back in the office and you guess let's say you guys were working on some new Clark's original kind of crazy concepts or collaborations and mm. I, could, I could definitely see this being pretty valuable but yeah how would you how would you describe this or encourage them and I guess for everyone that's in the Twitch stream right now they're probably asking that same question why why should I even invest time or energy into this yeah sure so um from from my experience I've tried to learn many different 3d programs as has my team over the years and 
Uh, some of them are just uh, a bit too complicated or um, it can just be daunting, I think, when you look at a new 3D program. Those first few days or weeks when you're trying to, trying to get through it, it's, it's painful. Um, and that definitely puts off someone with no 3D experience whatsoever. It puts me off and I'm a, I'm a 3D designer most of the time. So, um, so I would, it, I mean, there was already footwear designers who were interested in, in gravity uh, at Clark's anyway. Um, but it would, I think you can just show them quite quickly how, what you can produce in about, in a couple of hours. Once you learn the basic tools, it's, and everything's within the software, the, the really simple step-by-step -step tutorial on, on, on the controls. It's just like playing a computer game. Um, you, you learn the controls and you're away. Um, it's just, with, you'll get results within, within days rather than weeks or months in different programs. So I think that's, what, that's the appealing side of gravity. Um, it's, it's in terms of you know, fully detailed, really complex uh, footwear, such as um, like snow boots with like loads of components going on. I mean, yeah, it might it might not have the capability of doing that, but um, but I, it's, it's fully capable of doing a lot more than people think. Uh, I, before I used it, I I was under the impression maybe it was um, uh, maybe a little bit too uh, simple. But in sub D, you, you can just go into so much depth and the new tools that you guys have, the new um, updates that you guys have added, like um, creases and um, yeah, there's just so many constant updates that just really help. Uh, it's, it's like you sort of read in our mind of what we want every time something comes out. It's like, yes, I thought of that. that would, that's really helpful. So yeah, I mean, it, uh, a few people have been asking me actually um, since this project. A few footwear designers have been asking, you know, what what should I use to to start learning 3D? It's definitely becoming um, more and more popular for footwear designers to work in 3D as well as 2D. And I've just said, look, if you want to, if you want to get results quickly uh, and have some fun and be creative, then start with gravity. Um, and then, you know, who knows? Maybe you'll maybe you'll go into a bit more detail with with the rendering package or, or something more engineering based but as a starting point from my experience I, I i can't think of anything um as good as this that that means a lot to to us and the team it's we you know what we've tried to do is work with users the whole way and we we initially started with with automotive because that was kind of at the time the people that had the headsets when they were all tethered and when it started to become this mobile thing, we, we were able to kind of branch out to a lot of different disciplines and the foot, footwork kind of came to us, as I mentioned earlier, but time and time again, we get folks like yourself who have eight years experience working with eight or more years of experience working with 3D programs and they're using this tool. It's, it seems like we don't have all the features of, of Moto or, or Rhino or anything else. And mm. yeah, it's just a great honor to hear that you know that this is a great entry point for people or and as well as a great uh, addition to your tool chest mm -hmm. so with that i would love to hear if there's any questions from the, the twitch stream and happy yeah. to answer questions for all the questions for us we for can just sure for sure definitely there's a lot of gravity sketch love out there in the world we did actually have a really great conversation and some shared resources based off of our panel discussion this morning just a lot of questions from those in the chat of where to go where to learn um you know where can they go are there online tutorials so i did share the gravity sketch learn um, the website with the learn links um there's also i think this is a good representation of the online community um, everyone in the chat is also sharing where they go to learn <laughs> and watch tutorials for Gravity Sketch. So that's always really great. Um, there's been a number of questions on the collaboration um, feature within Gravity Sketch. Uh, people are curious if it's just for review or are, is it available for teams to work in? Can you speak a little bit to that at all? Yeah, sure. So if we if we pin Amos screen here, yep. uh, you can see that we're able these guys are able to work together in real time. So you get, you have the full Gravity Sketch package in collaboration. So that means you have all your sketching tools, you have 
all of your manipulation tools, you have your environments, pretty much everything is there. We're just sharing it across the network to each person. Um, sorry for the sirens. We have, we have a live, work on a busy street. But what the, the review get, brings to it is this idea that you can um, actually address things in real time. And, and the way that Ali set up his room here, he walked us through this. It was about us and about eight other people as the judges for this competition. And so you can also story tell. So I think over time, you, you know, the more we work with people from a certain industry, whether it's footwear, whether it's automotive, whether it's um, concept art and film and gaming, we'll start to understand and unpack their workflow and their the things that they would want to, to do in the solution. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like it's almost like review and design go hand in hand. And so yeah, that's essentially how I feel when when um, when Ali was presenting this to us, I was actually taking his I was taking a copy of one of his um, one of his ideas and I was like marking it up and just saying, okay, I won't, I want to ask questions after he's done pre presenting about this, this, and this feature. Um, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, Ali, on, on, on how you might do, do both the, the review and the collaboration and real-time collaboration, because this is a kind of a culture shift, you know, how often do two yeah. people sing on the same piece of paper? Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, that was a bit of a shock actually, like at the end of the presentation, Shay had created this sort of, separate table on the side that I hadn't noticed and it felt like a real presentation scenario with all the people in the room and he was like hey guys come over here and I just would like to talk through the, the exploded view uh, of the model and that genuinely felt like we were in an office and we everyone literally walked over to the table and had a look and it's just so surreal um but yeah I, I can think of like if you're working with someone you can just both jump in and either work on the same model, perhaps, uh, that would be an interesting collaboration way of working, or perhaps you've got um, a more technical person or um, you just need to get feedback from someone. It's just a great way of analyzing in 3D instead of sending an email with loads of screenshots. Uh, it's just it's just a bit more uh, futuristic. It just feels like now is the right time to be working this way. Um, and yeah, me and my, me and my uh, freelance uh, team, if you like, uh, we're thinking of loads of cool ways to present ideas to clients using using stuff like this and uh, with other programs as well, but using VR in a way of presenting our, our ideas and concepts. Um, yeah, it's the, there's no limitations really with presenting like this, I think. Yeah, I mean, and just to touch on that, working with designers like yourselves or people that are experts in it will help us better define how people want to work in 3D. So I think, you know, what we have is great, but where we want to go to is so much more specific to what people are actually trying to achieve. And we can only get there through users using it and giving us feedback. And so what we've done is we've exposed all of Gravity Sketch to every user in the scene. But one question that we're starting to ask from time to time is like, okay, what is, what if you just want to present it to a design director? So what feature set do they need? Do they need all the creation tools? Do they need um, the ability just to edit? Do we need permissions? And and so what I encourage everyone on the Twitch stream is to, to sign up and, and get involved in our in our um, free trials for collaboration with you and your team and help drive this a little bit forward because you have everything there. It's all of Gravity Sketch and, and the co-creation co thing. And there definitely will be the design review side of things and then there'll be the collaboration side of things. and it's kind of uncharted territory when it comes to collaboration in 3D. And we'd love to to really hear your voices and, and build this tool collaboratively. That's essentially how we built our, our actual feature set. So we'd love to do the same thing, like our creation feature set. We'd love to do the same thing with, um, with this collaboration feature set as well. Sorry for the glitchy screen. Um, it's, I think it's really hard to push so much. Yeah, uh, so much I was through. gonna say. Emo screen's a bit glitchy, but um, yeah. VR. It's, <laughs> VR, we're trying to, to give you guys 90 frames per second. <laughs> Any other questions in the... Uh... Yeah, so, well, one thing too, again, all of all of the kind remarks, um, someone had just said, like, it's really great that Gravity Sketch is making it possible for humans, you know, for humans as a, as a species, we've always made things with our hands. So congrats to you guys for making a device that allows people to continue to make, but in a virtual sense and in a 3D 
3D digital sense, um, which is really cool. I think these are tools that, you know, you guys have touched on this before that are really revolutionizing the ways that things are designed and created. So good job on you. There was a question for you, Ollie. This was a, a little while back when you were talking, um, speaking about the project you did for Laceless. How, how long did it take you to get started when you first, I know you said you started in 2D, for the project, but when you first made that jump into Gravity Sketch and put that headset on, what was that um, time frame like? You know, any any yeah. hurdles, roadblocks you ran into? What was that experience sure, yeah. for you? So, yeah, um, had the, we were all given the headsets for two weeks was the time limit. Um, obviously, most of us were doing our, our day job as well. So I was doing it most evenings. Um, it was hard to sort of put days on it. It was more like about four or five hours an evening. Um, literally, the first couple of days, I was just playing around and just so amazed. I was blown away by using VR. It was just so much fun uh, just playing about with all the free games that come with it as well. So I think after about... When I started learning the tutorials, I think um, it took me about three to four days to feel super confident uh, that I could create anything. Some people who've used Sub-D before or VR before would probably pick it up even quicker. Um, but yeah, I'd say three days using it and you'll, you will once you work your way through the tutorials, so they're super fast, just simple steps. You're, you're, you should be, um, you should be good to go. You should realize that, you know, you can really create anything. And, uh, these layers that, um, that the guys have added in recently because it was limited to four layers, I believe, or six. Um, but yeah, now I think it's unlimited. Is that right, Shay? Uh, yeah, it was uh, four before. Yeah. Now we're um, on. Yeah, it's, that makes such a difference um, for um, for creating footwear because there's so many little components that just little things like that just just really help. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd say I'd say a few days to a week is is all you need and. Um, yeah, within the, within the second week, I was able to create those renders and and create the presentation literally the a few hours before the actual presentation, and um, that was it. Yeah, a couple of weeks it absolutely flew by. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm digging through to see more questions. We've I dropped the link. So the gravity sketch link is also in the chat. Um, of course, there's a ton of resources. If you just dig through the different tabs on their website, you can find most likely everything you're looking for. Um, you could join the discord as well. That's a that's, that's a, right. Yeah. Um, Emil, if I can just ask you quickly, can you turn on external camera? Because you we're getting a lot of um, flickering on your screen. It might just help to smooth out the stream a bit. So um, if you have tethered to a PC, you can turn on external camera. And with external camera, what we're able to do here is um, essentially you can just view it from a third person. So now Amos is just going to set up a stationary, like a tripod camera, and he's going to go over and start working with his uh, with his colleagues. Yeah. Thanks, Amos. And this this will this should stop the flickering because we we essentially um, do less frames per second. But oh, it's still going. All right. Let's see how how, how far it holds up. Um, yeah, back to you, Megan, if there's any other questions. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's see. Um, there was a little question. Someone um, was just is just starting, I think, spent one day so far in Gravity Sketch um, and was curious, had a question about bringing 2D images into Gravity Sketch. Can you talk a little bit about the process of bringing in just an image or, you know, some, something else you've created in a 2D program and working off of that in Gravity Sketch? Um, I want to, I want to see if I could put Ollie on the spot to just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. he had to learn it. He had to learn it in lessons. That's it. Yeah, That's it. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, the landing pad that, um, that comes with Gravity, your landing pad login makes it super easy to transfer images back and forth. So from your um, from your computer or wherever the image is on your phone, you can just upload it to the landing pad, which is on the app. Or is it an app or, or just a, a login on the website? It's a website. It's our cloud-based website, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then once it's there and you just make sure that you're connected to the internet when you're using Gravity, 
um, you go and uh, go into the, the tools and you just simply uh, upload your your uh, images. I believe it's called images or uh, screenshots. And um, you just literally drag them in and you can scale them. You can lock them into position. Uh, so for, for the slide, I, um, I had a, a load of images. I didn't just use my sketches. I used, um, I used uh, other slides that I really liked, other sandals that I really liked or, or shoes that I really liked the shape of. Um, and I was able to put that, all those in one layer and uh, laid them out into the correct views using the triad um, in the settings. Um, and and you can you can turn up the turn down the, the visibility, the transparency of the image, which is really helpful. So once we position the last in the, the right position and and the, and the images, um, that was a great starting point to start start making the model. Um, so yeah, it's just super easy, super quick. And and what's great about um, using the the Oculus uh, headset is. It's not connected to your, to your laptop or your, your computer. Um, you can you can be working on that. You can take it off and you can be doing something like a render or, or Photoshop sketch on your Wacom or on your on your computer. And you're just you know it's it's just like having an extra screen um, basically. So it's really cool. Yeah. So that process is pretty straightforward. You we have a a cloud solution called Landing Pad. Anyone that has Gravity Sketch can sign up for a landing pad account. And what that gives you is a gig of storage where you can throw up like your 3D models, like your OBJ models, your JPEGs or PNGs into the reference image folder or the reference geometry folder. And then when you're in Gravity Sketch, all those things populate in your menu. So anything that you have, it directly pulls it from the cloud and brings it into the application. So you can pull it at runtime and you can use it. So that's the, the process is pretty straightforward. It works on your phone too, because it's just a website. So if you have images from your phone, you can drag those over. And so it should be as flexible and as easy as possible. That's kind of the way that we're trying to design it. We, we have this really firm belief in mobile work workstation. So you can have your Quest, which is a mobile device. You can have your phone, you can have your iPad Pro. And if you can do pretty much like 80% of the workflow on these devices, that would be, yeah, that would be pretty much a, a dream and also really enforce that theme about um, accessibility and, and inclusivity that we're trying to push as a company. Yeah, that would be amazing to just be able to run it off of like a phone, a tablet, just the limit, just a few few devices to be able to just get up and going. Um, there was a question about, is it possible to record your work using a Quest? So when you're in Oculus Quest, can you record your uh, gravity sketch like session when you're in, or is there, does yeah. that require a third party? So Oculus has a built-in thing in Quest. I've never used it personally myself because I always just plug into the computer to get better definition. Mm -hmm. um, but they do have, it's part of the Oculus app. So there, there's probably a YouTube video out there. Uh, I think Rich is in the call, so Rich can Google that and, and maybe chuck that into the, um, into the chat in Twitch. But it's pretty straightforward. Oculus has it already native, natively built in. I'm not too happy with the quality. I think they have to do that because the latency, but we're, we're working on here is a way that we can potentially stream it, stream it, stream it, <laughs> stream it to uh, <laughs> stream it to landing pad. So landing pad will evolve over time. Right now, landing pad also has a web viewer. So you can view your sketches there. You can take screenshots directly from landing pad. You don't have to worry about doing that in the headset. So hopefully over time, this evolves into something that you can stream to, you can record and, and upload videos too and things like that. So, uh, you, you know, just tell us how you guys want to work or what kind of features you're looking for and excited about and maybe what's still challenging. And, and that's how we define and, and prioritize the work that we're doing. But at the moment you can use, you can use an Oculus's built-in system for this. Uh, but yeah, we, we love like Procreate. It's one of the apps that we always look at and admire and they have a, a record feature. So you can kind of play back your sketch session so stuff like that is also features that we're, we're really taking a close look at. And as soon as there's enough of a groundswell from the community that, hey, we actually would use this quite frequently uh, for even pre presenting or for sharing or for even just um, helping educate people, then that's how we can move forward and prioritize, prioritize that for, for development. 
Absolutely. That's another good reason for people to jump in your guys' Discord. I think there's always conversations about that. And I feel like for any time you have a question, as a user, if you have a question about a specific feature or a function or something you're looking for, either A, it's already there, or you're probably not the only one that wants to see that implemented. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great, um, again, as a user to know that you guys have your ears out. Um, paying attention to what is being talked about and spoken about in the community. Uh, let's see, do all Gravity Sketch versions have the same features? Is it good? Yes, yes, I know this has been a bit, of, a bit of confusion. I'll be completely transparent. In the beginning, we tried a little thing. We were thinking, okay, let's do some sort of um, tiered pricing structure and um, some sort of subscription model, but we just realized like VR is way too nascent and, and nuanced for that. And so what we wanted to do is just give as much people, as many people as possible, access to all the features of Gravity Sketch in one go. With that being said, we're seeing shadows on the ground. You won't see shadows in your quest. So there are hardware restrictions. If you do have um, a cabled version of Gravity Sketch, you can have shadows and different rendering effects, as well as you can place multiple cameras. Now, if you already have purchased a license of Gravity Sketch for the quest, it's cross by, so you can also use that with the Rift. And if you have a three a USB C 3.0 cable, just plug that into your PC if you have a graphics card that can perform at that level, and you have all the features there. So, all versions of Gravity Sketch will have um, all features accessible to you. Super awesome. And again, thanks for Rich. He's um, dropping a couple of links and replying to people in the chat. Um, Anything else? Any, I'm trying to think. We're just about coming up on our time. Um, who? wait, nope, there's another one. I lied. You know, every time I think the questions have slowed down, there's always one more right behind it. So just to, I think, to clarify off of that, um, so I can connect my Quest to my PC and run that at full quality, question mark. Yep, yes. That's right. Yep, just make sure you have the right graphics card that's spec. Oculus has some... Um, details for what graphics cards are compatible on their website. And um, it doesn't work for Mac. So it is PC, guys. You have to use PC. Um, hopefully, Apple will release something in the future. I know that they're toying with the idea. Or at least in the past, we were on stage with them for their their like top spec iMac, and, and they, had a, they had VR compatibility. But I, I'm not sure where they are with that now. Um, but yeah, over time, like think about this device as the Nokia brick. We all had one of those little brick phones, right? <laughs> played snake on it it was fun um but the the iphone is coming right there mm -hmm. will be a day where we have this um we have this uh this device that kind of fills all the little gaps and the holes um that we're currently experiencing and it won't it won't take as long as the iphone took to come right i think it's going to be completely truncated because inside the quest if you look at the guts and the chipset this is still like three three-year-old tech right it's not like the latest and greatest mobile technology in there and so it really just takes the community and people to start stepping in and purchasing and engaging with these devices and and advocating for better, stronger devices, just like we've done with our smartphones, um, before we end up with uh, a device that actually can can do just about everything that the PC version can do. So, I'm really excited about the future. We're just taking the baby steps right now, but over time we'll have different controllers, just like we have different mice. We'll have different mm -hmm. headsets. We'll have different resolutions. You can get like the expert MacBook Pro kind of equivalent to a virtual reality headset, or you can, you know, you can just have your, um, I don't want to pick on any PC company, but you can have your, uh, <laughs> you can have your Nokia brick, you know, you can, you can work. <laughs> but the idea for us is that we have, we have feature parity across all, across all devices. That's the direction we decide to move in moving forward. Well, this has been super great guys. Thank you to the entire Gravity Sketch team that is so diligent. I think there's all there's three people, there's three of you guys working in this collaborative space, uh, which is really exciting. Um, oh, let's see, does tracking of the Vive using uh, lighthouses give a better experience than outside tracking like the Rift S or Quest? It's a very- Not very noticeable, but I think as we move into design review and iteration and um, bringing like this multiple people kind of scenario where you're, you might be actually walking around in the physical space while being in virtual reality. We, we do know that, that that external tracking has a slightly better performance, but if you're managing the movement of your scene and creation, 
it's very marginal difference. So essentially what these guys are doing, they're floating around the scene and they're really managing where things are positioned. And yeah, you get pretty good tracking there as well. I mean, Oculus has done a really good job with the tracking. Super. All right. Any more? Any more questions? Is there, is there a possibility to work with you to test and develop Gravity Sketch? It's a good <laughs> Perfect question on our site. Great question. Go to our site and there's a sign up form and you can sign up to be a beta tester. We'll review it and um, yeah, and we'll, we'll bring you in. And so we work really closely with beta testers to get all the latest features. And we try to get people that are going to be active, mm -hmm. like actively give us feedback as we deploy features because sometimes, as Ollie said, we update so frequently. Sometimes it could be, it could be a weak turnaround and we just need someone to give us a bit of feedback. Hey, this doesn't feel right for X, Y, and Z reasons. Um, so we try to keep people that are active in that beta community. And um, and so we always do a bit of a cleaning of the beta channel just to make sure that we're we're keeping the people that are um, that are still still active. Not to say we, we frown upon anyone that's not active. People have day jobs and they're really busy. But <laughs> yeah, we just want to make sure that we keep the keep the cadence. Yeah, that's great. So go head over and look for that beta testing sign up. I know I can I can vouch and say for someone that works at a at a tech company, uh, be a beta tester. It's real cool. <laughs> you get to really, you know, have input from a user perspective. That's always super helpful. Um, all right. Any more, any more questions in the Twitch stream? Again, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you everyone for watching. We will, of course, the stream will.